afternoon. I am Holly Longdale. I'm the producer of EverQuest 2. And with me, I have some of my teammates. Um, and we're here to talk about Game Update 66, Scars of the Awakened, which is coming out on Tuesday, April 30th. Uh, and we've been really busy. So I would like to introduce Akil Hooper is the creative director. Uh, Nandi Zotz is our lead programmer. And Dave Kish is our assistant lead programmer. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Uh, so we've been really busy. Uh, we're in the final stages of putting together Game Update 66. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today, a bit more of a behind the scenes look. Uh, lately, we have talked about uh, lore um, and some of the details of the zones. So uh, I'll ask Akil to just go over the high level features, um, what the zone names are, what the themes are, and then we'll get into a few details. So Akil. All right. So um, zones we have coming are uh, Cobalt Scar, which is our primary overland zone, and uh, Siren's Grotto. We've got a couple. We've got Siren's Grotto coming in a couple flavors, like we do, like we did with our Chains of Eternity. So we've got Solo, our Advanced Solo rather, and Group, and Raid, and a few different raids and stuff. So good variety of content for players of all types. Yeah. Um uh, we've been lucky enough, uh, not lucky enough, it's our job. Uh, we've been playing uh, Game Update 66 uh, uh, a lot lately, um, as we do. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, our favorite moments, um, which will lead into talking a bit more about the design process. So, Akil, what's your favorite moment? Uh, uh, I don't want to give too much away. My favorite moment is probably the, um, uh, the burial scene. Leave it at that. Lots of fun, well scripted scene. Very good. Touching in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Sadness. Nandy? Uh, I've actually spent a lot of time playing through the raids and I've really been enjoying those. Pretty cool. Dave? Yep, his last stand and everything around it. A lot of fun. Very good. So, um, just in the general descriptions alone, I'm so proud of this team um, and what they've accomplished with this game update that there's a lot of uh, moments that are so much uh, further beyond just uh, killing and quest updates. So I wanted to ask Akil a little bit about the design process and how we get those really good moments um, in the game. Well, I mean, we so we usually come up with a pretty broad story overview when we start playing out an expansion or a game update. Um, and then we go into details, and we plan out all the individual quests. And then when we're doing the quests, we look for, um, for good places to keep for, for some of those key moments. So like a, a good place to kind of amp up the storytelling through something that's interactive or kind of highly visual and scripted and well put together. And uh, the artists and the programmers a lot of times and the designers work pretty well hand in hand to get some of that amazing stuff put together. So do you, when you're talking about plot lines and story development, do you, is there any unique things about the design process that might be interesting to our player base? I, I don't know if it's unique, but I think it's pretty fun. <laughs> so yeah, we, you know, we come up and we, we, we start with, again, like a broad story. Um, one of my favorite things that we, that we do on the team is we do table reads. So we sit down and we just read through all the dialogue. And it's great to, um, to hear your dialogue spoken by somebody else. You really get a good chance to to tell like kind of where someone stumbles because in a place where somebody stumbles when they speak they're also going to stumble when they read it and so we catch lots of stuff and we have to polish up our dialogue a good bit by doing that. Great, yeah, it, and I, in my opinion uh, uh, that extra step um, definitely shows it's been a really good experience going through all the content. Um, also with Game Update 66, in addition to the content you mentioned, um, we've also, um, uh, based on class uh, feedback on the forums, we've made a lot of changes um, uh, to a lot of spells in the game. Um, and Akil, if you can just talk in broad strokes about um, why we, what, why, what approach we're taking and why. Yep. So uh, we're focusing on, uh, on frustration points for classes. So looking for, there are a couple <coughs> threads on the forums where um, Mike Gans, our, our uh, spells guy, uh, asked players for feedback on things that bothered them about their classes and things that, that we could improve. Um, and so we went through and we, we hit just a ton of these things. Um, and I think that players are going to be pretty happy with a lot of things that we added and changed for them. Um, a couple of my favorites and a couple that, um, that the people on the team like the most are um, allowing Crusaders to cast while moving, which is pretty popular um, to the Crusaders on the team. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who you're talking about. Nothing to do with our <laughs> boss being a shadow knight, I swear. Uh, and um, uh, making swarm pets not terrible. Uh, they're, they're much better now. They'll survive better. They'll do more damage. Um, they spawn behind the mob now instead of in front of it. Um, they take uh, some, they inherit some stats from the pet owner. So, um, and lots of, lots of, um, 
lots of changes like that, lots of quality of, quality of life changes uh, <coughs> for players. Very cool. And part of that process, too, um, I, as you mentioned earlier, it's not just a design process. Quite often, engineering gets involved. Um, and I know lately, um, Dave uh, here has helped a lot with a, a lot of the spell changes. And, and one thing you look at and we look at as a team very carefully overall is performance. So we're going to take a few minutes and talk a little bit about that. So Dave, can you talk first about um, how you helped um, uh, optimize some of the spells, and then we'll go into some of the quest changes you made. Um, you've been doing a lot of work on that stuff. Yeah, as the years have gone on, we keep adding more and more to the game, but we're not you know, adding more and more computers to run it, so we have to run it a little more efficiently. Uh, we really found with spells that uh, now many raids, as Nanny was saying, is uh, lots of ads come flying in and we just start spewing out the AOEs like crazy. <laughs> and the next thing you know, we get something called a long frame. We actually get notified when this happens and it's whenever the loop that runs the game server each frame gets too long. And well, it's come up some, so we made a lot of changes recently, especially how area of effect spells are applied to things in a big batch rather than one at a time. Uh, I also redid a lot of how quests are loaded and saved on characters to make that uh, zoning a little faster. Some characters have five, 6,000 quests on them, and all 24 of you zone in at the same time with five to 6,000 quests each, and we got to load them all and <laughs> fill out all your information about it, and it gets a little crazy. Yeah. And then I redid the whole thing for collections. So can you talk about that a little bit? Um, yeah, collections originally did quite a bit of work every time you zoned. We'd read out, oh, how far are you along on each collection? And let me also bombard your client with all the information about collections that you already knew from the last time you zoned. So it caches a lot of that and it reduces a lot of not only the server time to load your collections, but to tell your client about all the collections you have. Right. That's great. Um, and so um, Nandy also, I should mention um, before moving on to Nandy, um, not only are these guys looking at optimizations, but as probably most of you are aware, not only are they working on the next big features we're working on, there's live issues that come up daily. These guys are solving issues, bugs, problems on a daily basis. Um, and recently, um, Nandy's taken on um, a task that everyone will hopefully um, get benefit from um, with regard to uh, performance, especially since you've been raiding. Yeah, so I've been uh, hopping on the live and uh, moving around to various servers and hanging out with uh, different uh, raid guilds and seeing how people actually approach our raid content, not from a content point of view, but from a lag point of view, and trying to identify some of the key places where we're, we're uh, causing the most amount of lag. Um, so far, I found that a lot of our combat system, because it is so complex, we're sending huge amounts of data to the, to the client. and people on relatively fast but slower internet connections uh, can get even so far as disconnected or really lagged out when we start sending all this data down. Uh, so some of you may have noticed on the forums I've been posting about uh, combat filter, which will actually do filtering on the server side uh, of all of your combat data, which will reduce the amount of information uh, going down to your client and will help a lot of people that have slower internet connections. And we're also adding uh, a heal filter, which will do the same for heals. Um, and that's going to help a lot for, for people with slower internet connections. But we do realize that this isn't the only problem, and we're also making changes uh, to a lot of how the spell calculations are done on the server side. But those are a lot more time uh, intensive and delicate because what we don't want to do is totally rework the way that a spell works and then have that be viewed as a nerf or some, you know, some way that it's made worse for, the, for, the, uh, for those character classes. Uh, so we really want to keep everything the same, but at the same time, make it uh, perform more efficiently. Great. Uh, thanks. And then um, at the same time, speaking of systems um, and the game growing, um, we've mentioned, uh, or I mentioned uh, some time ago, probably February, that um, Player Studio housing would be coming. And it's on beta, so there is the ability to, um, to sell your house uh, on beta. Uh, and decorate. Um, and with that, we, uh, as a team, decided we wanted to improve um, housing uh, and the interface uh, and how it functions overall. So Nandy, can you talk a little bit about some of the um, changes we've made? And you should see some of those on the screen. Great. Yeah, so one of the first things that we noticed was that, um, well, we didn't notice, we kind of knew this, but 
we had uh, housing UI pieces kind of all over the place. You, you had the start menu with the uh, housing leaderboards, and then you had your character window with your houses. And a lot of times you were kind of, a lot of people were confused about where to go. Also, when you went up to a door, that brought up a completely different UI um, with all kinds of different options. So we had all these housing UI pieces. Um, so we had uh, Andy Rokes, uh, who is Terragant on the forums. A lot of you probably know him. He's pretty, pretty active on the forums kind of uh, look at the system and, and see what he could do to redesign it. And what he came up with, what he, what he lovingly refers to as the Omni House UI, <laughs> uh, which is a single uh, UI element that incorporates buying, selling, uh, visiting, leaderboards, pretty much everything about houses. Uh, so as you can see here, this is a, an example screenshot. Uh, the first panel is My Houses. So this is the window that we want to bring up when you go and click on a door or just when you bring up this UI, you can see all of the houses that you own. This will let you rename your houses. We've also added the ability to add two screenshots to houses, even if they're not published. So you can take screenshots of your houses, uh, and you know, you'll be reminded of exactly what's in there or whatever you want to see about your houses. You can also filter your houses, because we do allow you to own quite a few. And those will be similar to the filters that you're used to from the housing leaderboards. Um, there's also other tabs up here, buy homes, sell homes. Uh, leaderboards as we talked about, and visit. The visit functionality will actually go to the, the current zone that you're in and find out all of the houses that you have visitor access to and give you a list and, and a searchable filter, kind of similar to the visit on a particular uh, door right now. But you won't actually have to go figure out where you know, 5 Freedom Road in Freeport really is. You just need to get to Freeport and then find it in the visit list. Uh, we still wanted to make you travel and, and uh, you know, keep the houses in the world. We didn't want to make them this kind of ethereal thing that's kind of out there somewhere. So you still have to go to the zone, but you no longer have to find the specific door anymore. So we, that should really make it a lot more friendly for people to actually use the housing system and to find houses when they're trying to buy that chrono without paying their <laughs> market <laughs> we'll markup. <laughs> Uh, also with that, though, um, one of the requests um, that seem is age old um, is the ability for decorators to be able to use heading, pitch, and roll, roll I think being the specific one we haven't had before, on decorating items. So uh, go ahead, uh, Nandy, if you want to talk a little bit about that. It's a big change. Yeah, to decorators, this UI is, is fairly uh, uh, familiar. Uh, this is just the typical UI that comes up when you want to modify a house. Uh, especially in dungeons, we've added it to houses as well, and now we've also added, uh, you know, heading, pitch, and roll, so you don't have to go in and manually edit uh, your house layout file to edit those properties on an item. You can actually just do it in game visually, uh, and it should be a lot easier and, and uh, uh, more fun to decorate. Yeah, um, and with that too, I I should mention. Um, Initially, Player Studio Housing, we had hoped, would go live with um, our game update on Tuesday. Uh, but we still, we're really focused on making it a really good, seamless process um, that's really intuitive. So we're holding off on the launch a little bit. We don't have a date yet, um, but it won't be too long out. Um, uh, and speaking of um, delayed releases, um, we did talk in February, too, about what we loosely refer to as a daily objective system. Um, we don't have any news on that yet, other than we do expect to release it. Uh, we just don't have a date yet. The design team wanted to really pay, uh, pay more attention to it, but give it um, a, a lot of depth before we released it. And I do think it's going to be very worthwhile when we do launch it. It's a really good system. So we just wanted to do a bit more polish uh, first. Um, so, and with that, I thought it might be interesting with our team to talk a little bit about ourselves and our history. So I wanted to ask each of you what you did before you worked on EQ2. So, Akil? I played a lot of EverQuest. No. <laughs> uh, so, uh, after college, I was a GM, right next door from here, actually, uh, for a little while. And then I moved on to the EverQuest design team and was there for a little while, and then moved to EverQuest 2. And I left SOE for a while and worked on some other games and uh, came back uh, two years ago. I don't know. Feels like 17. <laughs> yeah, a long time ago, yeah. uh, Akil and I met actually through a guild. We didn't know, I certainly didn't know he worked for um, SOE at the time. So there's a lot of history amongst a lot of, um, we know each other from playing EQ um, and I, EQ2. Four or five 
people I played with are here, like from Working. our guild or around, so. Yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, Nandy? Um, before I worked here, I worked at another company doing um, radar systems for unmanned aircraft. Uh, I was the lead engineer for future combat systems, uh, <laughs> radar systems. Your everyday job. My everyday job, yeah. but I played a lot of EverQuest 2 and then I came here. Right. <laughs> a, a natural step <coughs> for any career. Of course. In, yeah. Uh, Dave? Uh, I've done everything. I was a school teacher. Uh, I was a construction supply manager. Uh, I worked on Planetside mm -hmm. 1, and now I work on EQ2. That's fantastic. Um, I just found out some of this today, in fact, so uh, I'm happy to share it with you. It's, it's actually not a stretch to see you as a teacher, Dave. Uh, yeah, people were, it was chemistry as well, so people were pretty uh, happy with some of the uh, experiments, which I got in trouble with all Did the time. Did you blow stuff up? Oh, yes. Great. Can we call you Mr. Kish from now on? <laughs> no. <laughs> I want to call you Mr. Kish from now on. <laughs> Mr. Okay. K. Mr. K. That's cooler. All right. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, we're just, I wanted to wrap this up, but first, um, the team, we all wanted to um, send out a big thank you to everyone on beta. Um, it makes a big difference to us, all the feedback, um, and even the team had been mentioning this time around, um, it seems every time we do a beta, we just get better and better feedback from the players and, and people testing. So we want to thank everyone for being on beta, and we really hope to see you on Tuesday when GU66, Scars of the Awaken, goes live. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Sony.